Oder, oder. <lacht> It won't last long, don't worry. This parliament is a dead parliament. Yes. It should no longer sit. It has no moral right to sit on these green benches and whatever. is a disgrace. A man like him, a party like this, and a leader like this, this Prime Minister, to talk about morals and morality is a disgrace! Yeah. I, uh, I'm not sure I could discern in that marshmallow of, ty of the rhetoric any actual question. <laughs> But, but in so far... And we stand here, Mr Speaker, under the shield of our departed friend, yeah, 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 with yeah, many yeah, of yeah. us in this place yeah, yeah, subject yeah. to death threats and abuse every yeah, single yeah. day. And let me tell the Prime Minister that they often quote his words, yeah. surrender yeah. act, yeah. betrayal, yeah. traitor, yeah. and I, for one, am yeah. sick of it. We must moderate our language, and it has to come from the Prime Minister first. So I would be interested in hearing his opinion. He should be absolutely ashamed of himself. I think, Mr Speaker, I have to tell you, Mr Speaker, I, 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 I have to say, Mr Speaker, I've never heard such humbug in all my life. Because uh, the, the, the reality is... I'll take the point of order. I think it would be a courtesy to stay for the point of order. It would be a courtesy to stay for the point of order. The point of order relates to the matter of we've just been dealing against it. Well, I think the... Well, I, I asked the Prime Minister if he'd be willing to stay, but he doesn't wish to do so. So be it. But the Honourable Gentleman's point of order will be heard. The was an atmosphere in the chamber worse than any I've known in my 22 years in the House. On both sides, passions were inflamed, angry words were uttered, the culture was toxic. This country faces the most challenging political issue that we have grappled with in decades. There are genuine, heartfelt, sincerely subscribed to differences of opinion about that matter. Members must be free to express themselves about it and to display, as they unfailingly do, the courage of their convictions. <laughs> colleague, colleagues, I'm very grateful to the large number of people who've come up to the chair expressing concern about my throat and their generosity of spirit and humanity are much appreciated but I just want to take the opportunity to confirm to the House that the state of my throat which is purely temporary is not down to the consumption of a kangaroo's testicle. <laughs> It, it would probably be poisoned. <laughs> and I do have a supply of throat sweets, should you need them. I'm sure we want to follow in the excellent footsteps of my right honourable friend, uh, the member for Maidenhead, who I notice is sitting behind me, uh, watching proceedings uh, closely. Mary Rimmer. Do you know, I, I find that one of the best days of the year is the day the clocks go back, because one gets an hour extra in bed, and I've always thought that is rather welcome. <laughs> uh, order, no, order, 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 uh, order. I believe I'm right in saying that the Shadow Home Secretary has had her six questions. <laughs> <laughs> Surely the 
public have a right to know if the Prime Minister is prepared to sacrifice the quality of food on the shelves in supermarkets, the rights of workers to take holiday and the rights of our children to breathe clean air. We're supposed to be temperate in our language, Mr Speaker, but quite frankly, that's a load of rubbish. That is not... That is not our intention. Well, goodness me, Mr Speaker, not a single word about what the opposition would do to support the government in trying to get a deal. No word of compromise. Absolutely flip-flop after flip-flop. Not a single, not a single, not a single constructive suggestion from the Shadow Secretary. Not a single, single constructive suggestion. Mr Speaker, why am I not remotely surprised? The Honourable Gentleman, the Honourable Gentleman, talks about a lack of interest. Oh, if the Honourable Lady would stop chuntering and listen, she might hear something. Speaker, the Honourable m- the Gentleman uh, may not be aware of this, but until about half an hour ago I had no idea who he was. But w- from his answer today, I wonder how he can be so deeply unpleasant to so many colleagues on this side, on that side. Well, I'm, I'm flabbergasted that the Honourable Gentleman says he doesn't know who I am, because he asked a question uh, earlier when I was at Dispatch Box and asked me whether I knew about Huddersfield. Um, And after he thanked me um, and and talked about it, he thanked me because I didn't mention that I'm a comprehensive schoolboy who went to school in Huddersfield and he as a member of of Huddersfield is privately educated in the south of England. Mr Speaker, it's almost as if members of the government have been taking lessons dancing around slippery poles this afternoon. Um, In answer to the the latter question, yes. And when it comes to slippery poles, um, I think the thing that is slippery is uh, putting forward a 10-minute rule bill to say if honourable members, um, for whatever reason, move to one side of the House and leave their party, they should stand for a by-election, and then not doing the same thing herself when she crosses the floor. That's slippery. Mr Speaker... Please, can you continue to make sure you are fair and balanced because sometimes it doesn't feel like this. Secondly, 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 I I will just very gently say to the House, as experienced members know, As experienced members know, there was a time when statements didn't run very long. Not many members got called. That's changed. And over the last decade, I call almost everybody most of the time. The idea that if you don't call everyone every time that they want to speak, that that is somehow unfair, is so manifestly absurd that I think most of the House would recognise it as such. I do what I can to stand up for the rights of this House and honourable and right honourable members on both sides of it. I've done it for a decade. I'm doing it now. I'll go on doing it. I'm standing up for the important principle of the decency of our democracy, and I thought that's pretty fair. Minister. When I uh, launched the Better Off Out group in Parliament back in 2006, I could always rely on the, the now leader of the Labour Party. Uh, I could rely on him to vote for my proposals in the voting logs. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry he's now ditched the only popular policy he ever believed in. Close the door. It's Black Rod. Open the door. Black Rod! This Parliament is accordingly prorogued to Monday, the 14th day of October.